this, my friend's 1973 Corvette Stingray. And he brought it over to my garage. He wanted some help replacing the fuel filter. He had uh, taken the, the car to, uh, to a shop that sometimes does work uh, for him on his car. But they told him that they didn't want to touch this thing. It was literally welded to the filter housing. And the nut, again, was, was rounded off, so there was, there was no um, other way than to resort using the locking pliers. And even at that point, even though I applied quite a bit of force, um, the thing wouldn't just break loose. So eventually I had to use a cheater bar in order to, um, to separate these, these things because, again, they, they seem to be kind of welded to uh, one another and it's not I guess a lot of people you know they, they, they don't want to do this and I can understand why but uh, sometimes you got to do what you got to do now this thing once we get the filter out he, he had one of those kind of screen things um, I, I haven't seen one of those in a very long time so I don't know if that's what came with the car but he tells me they um, they hadn't replaced the, the, the fuel filter in about 20 years. And I can see why that created that issue with the, with the nut getting completely stuck onto the, the filter housing. And here I am getting the, the cheater bar because um, we needed as much help as, as possible to get those things to, to break loose. If you've done any wrenching on your vet, then you know that those fender big humps, they, they make it kind of tough um, to reach in there. So that added to the, to the difficulty of the job. But eventually, we succeeded, and that thing just broke free from the from the housing. We'll find out. Uh, you can smell it too. That's impressive in itself that you can get it with. I don't know if the rubber is going to do that. That is too easy. Mm -hmm. stuff. The other thing is, there's supposed to be a plastic washer back here. Oh, yeah. a, um, it's a one time use, basically. Alrighty, so this is what came out of the carburetor. Some kind of whatever was left of a screen and uh, just remnants of a filter at some point, maybe 10, 15, 20 years ago. And this is what a, the right new filter is supposed to look like. And 
think it's also missing the, the washroom, unless it's still in there. Alrighty. There's supposed to be a, yeah, there it is. So a little plastic washer. And again, people sometimes mistakenly reuse them and they're not supposed to. stains in there but that's not an issue and I also have a new gasket for it that's the old one of course and this one just goes slips right on top of the uh, little channel here there's a groove for it and you always want to replace those and I fished out the, the spring and actually we have a new filter for it so We'll see what happens next. There we go. We have the spring. And then we have filter and the housing. So after I installed a new fuel filter, I turned my attention to the idle mixture screws, only to find out that one of them was, I don't know how they bent this thing. I mean, if you look at it, it's totally out of whack. And um, eventually we'll, both of them will have to be replaced. Uh, in the meantime, I, I tried my best to straighten at least one of them, the one that, this particular one. And if you look carefully, you can see there's still a bend. I didn't want to break this thing and uh, I couldn't find uh, the original ones that came with my car. I thought maybe I could make those work, but uh, unfortunately that's sometimes what you find with these old cars. People really manage to do weird stuff to, uh, to them. So after installing the new fuel filter and adjusting the idle mixture screws, we took the bed out for a drive and it ran a lot better. Now there's still a whole bunch of little projects that we're going to be addressing in the future, so I hope you'll stay tuned. But that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye.